I, I get the romanticism of it all. I do, and I like wolves as much as the next guy. A few of them. But I think forcing a, a state agency against the advice of their biologists, and I'll tell you, their biologists are opposed. You're not going to get really? one to go on record, but I know a bunch of them. And they're going to, they, in a candid moment, they're going to tell you this is not a good idea. Have you ever been introduced to a wolf? Have you ever been reintroduced to a wolf? Well, Proposition 114 is going to do that just for you. Rick Enstrom was the wildlife commissioner here for the state of Colorado for many years, also a rancher as well. He has been one of the loudest guys saying, well, let's hold up on 114, reintroducing the wolves. I, let me just ask you about this term, reintroduction. As I understand it, these wolves were not originally in Colorado, the ones that are, that are being reintroduced. Is that no, right? Those, those were extirpated in the 1940s, and this is just a gray wolf, a northern gray wolf. It's not even the same wolf we had, but so, it's so a it's wolf. So it's not a reintroduction. It's an introduction. It's an introduction. All right, so almost like a great dating service. <laughs> Let me ask you this question. As wildlife commissioner, you've got connections, you've talked to people. Are the wolves already here? Because I'm hearing that they're already here. There have been reports of examples that they're here. Are they here? I maintain friendships with folks inside the Division of Wildlife since I was a, a commissioner for eight years, chaired it for three years. And I made a couple of phone calls yesterday. And yes, we do have wolves in Jackson County. We do have wolves uh, up in northern Colorado. Uh, three were shot when they got back into Wyoming a few weeks ago. But... There's a lot of wolves, and you can't that's, that's count why we wolves. Need to build How do you a, even find them? That's why we need to build a wall between us and Wyoming, <laughs> uh, just to save the wolves. Yeah, um, so they're already here. They're so, here. So if we vote yet to this, we're going to artificially add even more, even though that they are coming in naturally. Uh, that, that's the idea, and that's the concept. In 2023, where the Division of Wildlife will be instructed to start doing a rollout of wolves across... Probably Western Colorado, Northern Colorado. So the left here in Colorado has been very good at grabbing some of the language the right uses, which is local control, local control. And they do that to try to get rid of oil and gas and to raise minimum wages and to put taxes on cigarettes and ban vaping products under the guise of local control. But somehow when it comes to this issue, which is going to be very devastating in certain local areas, the hipsters with man buns go-karting on, uh, on the 16th Street Mall <laughs> are going to make a decision whether or not there should be wolves on, on your property up on a ranch. And we see this all the time. You know, it's the Denver Boulder complex that has the most votes and they dictate terms. So when you talk about local control, we go to our county commissions, which are independent elected bodies, Republican and Democrat. Forty of 64 of the counties in the state of Colorado have come out officially opposed to, to the Proposition 114 and the introduction of this wolf. Why? Why do they care? Because they understand the financial ramifications to agriculture. They understand uh, uh, the expense issue to local wildlife. What, what is the ramification to, to the economy? I, you know, as, as an urbanite um, enjoying a nice craft beer while going to a pot shop, I'm thinking, you know, so a few wolves are wandering around in the woods. That just makes Colorado more special. It brings back, it brings back the animals that once were here. We ought to remember, by the way, there used to be dinosaurs here too. So we could go all Jurassic Park. I was, real, I was really little at that. <laughs> <You were about. laughs> was, um, what? What? what is, explain to me the, the the ramification. What? What do you mean? There's economic ramifications. There's already coyotes and all sorts of. There are mountain there, lions and bears. That's you're right. The problem is in, in the hunting industry, which is one of the biggest businesses in the state of Colorado. And we fund the Division of Wildlife with all of the sales of hunting licenses, primarily elk licenses to out-of-state hunters, which is the lion's share of funding for the Division of Wildlife. We can look to Wyoming and our friends there that have seen their elk herds reduced to 10%, not by 10%, to 10% of what they used to have. And we've raised our prices. And just to, for, make, just to make it clear, Wyoming has already done 
what we are proposing to do. So they've reintroduced a wolf, uh, uh, a gray wolf to Wyoming. They did the Yellowstone and, it, and they came everywhere and now you can go and shoot them on sight because they understand. Wait a minute. Wait. I, I know what that many. means. When, when the Department of Wildlife actually gives you permission to shoot on site, mm -hmm. uh, the Wildlife Department would, uh, is very careful about the zones of what herd you can go hunt deer in this area but not in that area, or you can help elk here but only female elk or only male elk or something. You're saying in Wyoming it's gotten so bad, like killing a rodent, Farmers can just shoot them on site. Yeah, but there's a lot of Wyoming that is just inaccessible, so they can roam, and, and the the periphery of those areas is where you see, you have to buy a little wolf license, but everybody carries them out there because they need to keep them in control. And the other problem is, John, as we look at the states that surround us and up into the north and up into the northwest, they're a huntable species or a shootable species. Colorado is that buffer that protects the northern gray wolf from the southern gray wolf, which is in New Mexico and Arizona. So they're two separate species that we really don't need to be interbreeding because it'll just be wolves. And by nature anyway, they're coming down here. I, I keep going back to this. They're already here. They're here. Then help me again with the economic problems. So, so a few wolves are, are, are rolling around and yeah, the. Farmers might have to shoot a couple, and yeah, they, they thin out the elk herd, but, you know. Well, you need to, you need to go up to Meeker and, and some of that northern Colorado country that first week of elk season and see all of those Texas and California license plates for folks that work 360 days a year to go have five good days enjoying the outdoors of Colorado and pursuing the thing they love the most, which is, is hunting our big game. But you understand for urbanites, the issue of hunting seems nasty. And the idea that this might hurt hunting, well, that's okay. I mean, a wolf and an elk, this is the way nature is. And there's going to be a wonderful balance because that's the way nature is. And so we need to bring it back to that. And the idea that uh, the state makes money and people make money by hunting is really distasteful to a lot of people. Well, then, then that's why I point to the fact that we do a lot of other good things like educating all the kids in, in all of these public schools in, in the urban complex so they can understand wildlife and understand the management of, of wildlife through the North American model of big game management, which is hunting. I know farmers and ranchers are particularly worried about this um, because if a wolf can take down an Elk, and I don't know if, if you've seen an elk, but it's actually the time of year to go up to Estes Park and, and check them out. If, if a wolf can take that down, they can take down your cow. They can take down your steer. They'll take down they whatever they They can take care of your sheep. They, they will, they'll take whatever they and want. And here's the sad deal. I, I'm a moose aficionado and very involved with the introduction of, wall, of, uh, of moose in Colorado up on the Grand Mesa and all of these other areas. And now we have a really nice moose population that we manage very carefully. They've killed all of them in areas of Wyoming because they're really? big, slow, plodding creatures. And they'll get in the crusty snow and you get six or eight eight wolves chasing them around until they drop from exhaustion, and, and they're the first to go. And we spent so much time, energy, and money in trying to get moose in Colorado, and that's a big, beautiful animal. Every, who doesn't love going up? You talk about elk. When you go up there and see one of those majestic moose, yeah. you know, with stuff oh, hanging off incredible. of their antlers and eating underwater, and you go, that's a beautiful thing. You won't see that beautiful thing anymore, I can virtually guarantee you. What I still have a hard time getting at is the emotional pull of this. Because particularly as people have been inundated with caring for the environment, this still feels like a pro-environmental thing, reintroducing a species. You know, um, during the Owens administration, uh, and I'm sure you were involved and Greg Walter was involved in helping reintroduce a lot of species that were going in, in, extinct. In fact, breeding them some special fish that were extinct was really hadn't been done, which is like, well, how many more of these trout do we need? <laughs> the guys 
bred them and released them and got them off the endangered list. Isn't this kind of like that? Well, kind of like that, except the only thing that Lynx likes is the occasional snowshoe hare. So there isn't that kind of reaching predator problem. I, I get the romanticism of it all. I do, and I like wolves as much as the next guy. A few of them. But I think forcing a, a state agency against the advice of their biologists, and I'll tell you, their biologists are opposed. You're not going to get really? one to go on record. <laughs> But I know a bunch of them, and they're going to, they, in a candid moment, they're going to tell you this is not a good idea. And the devil, since you're the devil, Indeed. devil's advocate, uh, devil's in the details on this deal. And the only people that are going to make out in this whole process are the lawyers that are going to be fighting about this for five years. It's not going to happen by 2023. The, um, yeah, you really do mention the other animals that are there kill very small animals. Lynx is not, uh, not going to take down your prize steer. Um, <laughs> I, I don't know why I'm coming up with this image from uh, um, Game of Thrones where they have these big, beautiful wolves that help protect you know, the family you care about. I don't think that's really what we're introducing. I think we're reintroducing the dragons that are kind of come by and, and eat the livestock and, and an occasional kid or two. I think that's what we're trying to introduce into... Into Colorado. Well, I'm, I'm not sure uh, if we do get a big old bunch of them around here that tent camping is going to be as popular as it was. <laughs> really? And, and I, hadn't, I hadn't even thought and, about that. And just from, you know, when you're just cut yeah. a thin skin of fabric and you hear them howling around, it would be unnerving. And, and, and we're seeing that with bears, too. Nobody tent camps in the back country of Wyoming anymore. Because of the bears. <laughs> I wouldn't. There's no way. Wow. Do they have any argument that you support? I mean, the, the purpose behind this, I've never quite understood the drive to bring back this wolf that never has been there, yeah. even though other wolves are coming in. Here's, what, what's the reasoning, do you Here's think? the drive. Because it, 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 it took a lot of out-of-state money to put this on the ballot and to make this happen, and i got to wonder what their real agenda is. Well, the long-term game is they saw that we had an opportunity because we have... Uh, Democrat legislature, Democrat governor, Democrat appointed wildlife commission, they see the opportunity to present their case and it's the old uh, full court press. Incredible. And, people people want to go, they want to get some more information about this and, and fact check what you're telling. Is there a place they can go? Oh, well, you can go to that article that I wrote for Complete Colorado with Scott Weiser that has been very, very well distributed and shared and, and uh, it's a thoughtful piece, so you can find that on page two of Complete Colorado. And you just need to get on the internet and look, go to the Farm Bureau, go to Stop the Wolf. And in the meanwhile, also go to the proponents page and kind of weigh all of that information because there's, it's a good argument, but the devil's in the details. It's going to be a mess. I, I am so tired of the urban areas, the Boulder Denver corridor beating up on rural Colorado because they don't understand the lifestyle, they don't understand the economics, it seems very weird to them, and the outdoors for them is, is just a place to go and play on the weekends. It's not their livelihood, it's not their generations, it's not where their kids are. It's pretty and we go skiing and we go backpacking and we go kayaking, but, but it is an economic engine for us beyond just hunting. Farmers, ranchers uh, are going to be devastated in certain areas because of this. They will. I feel, I feel <laughs> terrible for them. And who's going to pay for the whole thing, ultimately? I mean, yeah. since we have wolves here, why have a big fight about it? Why don't we just protect the ones we've got, let them roll out naturally, and, and kind of serve as that buffer between a state that has a Mexican gray wolf and a state that has a northern gray wolf and will be the buffer, and they are going to filter in. We're going to get the grays coming into New Mexico, from New Mexico into the Durango area. We're going to have the grays coming across from Wyoming like they're doing today. We've got, we got, we got a real bloods and crips thing going on. <laughs> All right. I think you can say that. <laughs> Rick. Thanks for, for putting up this fight. It's, it's an important one. I appreciate all you do. Well, I'm honored to weigh in, and thanks for having me here. Good to see you again. If you enjoyed that conversation, by all means, click one of these other great programs. We have the best conversations with the most fascinating Coloradans. 
and subscribe to our channel. Just click down below and hit that little bell button too. You don't want to miss a single show.